live from Independence Square in Colombo. And uh, <clears throat> the crowds have gone completely nuts, berserk, if you like, as you can hear from the back of me. <laughs> And a very good evening to you and a warm welcome to Newsline Live, this time around in the studio, back to the studio. Uh, but absolutely, it was delightful and uh, very uh, inspiring to be with the sovereign people of Sri Lanka on the streets of Sri Lanka. And uh, what a difference a candle and silence can do. Um, absolutely wonderful. The, today in Parliament, um, we saw uh, what I would call the big top, the big top circus. For almost a month now, the silent visual and the protesters have grown in number regularly, constantly growing. But in Parliament today, um, there was hardly, there was a little bit of lip service to these protests, but uh, it was almost as though the 225 were rather ashamed of themselves, ashamed to talk about the fact that the people actually made the change, not them. If it was the opposition parties who had been having rallies around the country and then caused the government to sort of almost uh, topple so far, shaky at, in, at best now, then, oh, the parliament would have been full of it. They would have said, oh, we did it. But no they fail to acknowledge the power of the sovereign people. To discuss that and perhaps a bit more, because what next? We've got here um, a person who represents um, an organization that has been quite a pain in the side of several governments, not only this government, uh, all in the quest to sort of improve the lot of the people. He's right here, the Executive Director of the Centre for Policy Alternatives, Dr. Pakisoti Saravanamutu. Good evening to you, Dr. Saravanamutu. Good evening, Faris. Now what? Now what? Well, the word on the street yeah. is that Gotabe Rajpaksa should go and that the dynasty should go as well. Hmm. Now, there are certain people who are saying that all 225 should go, but take the first two. Gotabi Rajpaksa must resign and all the Rajpaksas must get out of politics. So we don't have a proper government at the present moment. I mean as far as I'm as far as I know, we don't have a finance minister, we don't have any number of ministries, and we need to therefore have a government that has the credibility and the legitimacy to get on with things. Because certainty, stability, those are the key things that are going to stem the further descent into the abyss that we have as far as the economics are concerned. So we have a crisis of governance. Mm. Now, now, you know, um, I've been out on there about five times now. The message is always the same. Mm. We want a change. Mm. We want a planned economy. We want proper progress, not this hocus-pocus, henchaya benefiting kind of economy. And it's clear that corruption has not abated despite the challenges of, to the economy of COVID. Countries like Bangladesh have actually increased their reserves. We've hit bottom. Absolutely. Right? And uh, who would have thought that uh, when they received 6.9 million plus a uh, almost two-thirds because they had to go to the others to get it who would have thought that uh, several months later they'd be sort of running for cover so Dr. Parker uh, legally constitutionally can they have elections okay the constitutional position as far as I understand it is is that as far as the presidency is concerned Gotabe Rajapaksa can call a presidential election next year 
if he so desires to stand again for the presidency. As far as the general election is concerned, again it is next year that he, the president, can dissolve parliament. Now, outside of those two, yeah. the president, of course, can resign, and the president, of course, can be impeached. Yeah. Parliament can vote. I think it is a two-thirds majority that they require to say that they want to be dissolved and go to a general election. And uh, <coughs> so the parliament can, if they want to. Yes, they can. Uh, do you think, uh, this is p purely a personal opinion, do you think that the opposition and the government both don't want an election? Absolutely, they don't. Because the public will shove them out. <laughs> no, exactly. They don't want an election. They don't want election. But having said that, at the end of the day, the election is about choosing between the options that are made available to you. So unless there aren't, are going to be a whole new crop of candidates who are supposedly clean, untainted by scandal and corruption and all of that, we're going to get the same lot presented to us. And therefore we are going to have the option of choosing not the best, but the least objectionable. Um. <coughs> Uh, I think uh, the cameraman needs to adjust uh, uh, the guest's camera up a little bit. Uh, but uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, Dr. S uh, Dr. Parkisoti, the people were very clear when I spoke to them, almost everyone, almost, I, I think in fact everyone, they all said they've shown that they can't do it, yeah. that they're corrupt, that they've made monumental blunders, so it's time no, for absolutely. them to I go. Mean, the one, one simple message is Gotha must go. Yes. Yeah. I know it's I know it sort of rhymes easy and it rolls off the tongue easy, you know, hashtag go, go to go. But go, go to go sounds almost like it's a, you know, a rally for Gotha. Well, yes, I suppose it could sound like that. Yes. But, here but that, that's a good reference point for the CID when they question somebody. And they say, well, you know, I said it was in favor. True. No, but I mean very clearly that there, there is no compromise as far as that's concerned. And and now the people have started going to various parliamentarians' houses and demonstrating there. Um, they're all peaceful. They're not. They're not. You know, attacking them. No, but this is the thing. I mean, you know, you can have violence inserted into these demonstrations. Now, some people are suggesting that the government has a vested interest in creating some violence. There are other worst possible case scenarios where, where there are suggestions that they will create this violence in order that you create a tremendous law and order problem which brings in the military. Hmm. You know, and that you know, if the president, who public sentiment wants out, refuses to accede to public sentiment, then he is going to come and say, look, I can't vacate office now because there's a tremendous law and order problem we have to deal with that first and foremost. Um, <coughs> so today the, the parliament decided uh, to, uh, to, to meet the, you know, the party leaders and they've uh, sort of postponed the sittings till Wednesday. Um, the uh, leader of the main opposition, uh, the SJB, has indicated that he doesn't want to be part of any, any of this. Uh, what do you think the uh, rationale is for that? Well, I think there are two reasons. One is, is that he sees the government asking all political parties to be part of a new government as a way of spreading responsibility and mm. with that responsibility blame for the current situation right. and the pain that is going to be visited upon the people in terms of the bitter medicine that we will have to fall swallow because it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm. You know. Secondly, I think he wants to give the message that, look, I will do, I will bow to the people's bidding, and that is not to come into power through any kind of deal-making or compromises with the existing political parties. I will come to power because the people have put me in power. Mm. Um, <coughs> I see. Now then, um, There's no easy way. I'll just ask you, 
what kind of leader do you think you've observed uh, Sri Lankan politics for you know as long as anyone can remember uh, and your hair gives it away all right so and on top of that you must have observed what's been happening in the last month so what kind of leader will appeal to the people what, do, what does Sri Lanka really need what Sri Lanka needs is a leader with a very clear vision of what this country should be in the next 10 years. A very clear vision, a commitment to communicate this in all honesty and integrity to the people so that popular legitimacy accompanies government policy. And you need a proper plan in mm. terms of policy. This government has no policy at all. It has no policy at all. It just kicks the ball further and further down the field. And then when it comes to another payment, mm. they scramble around and collect the money. But that's not enough. I mean, we have deep structural problems as far as this economy is concerned. And unless you're going to address those, you're going to have to visit this kind of calamity, have this cal calamity visited upon you ever so often. And... Uh, <coughs> Do you think that there is, there is such a leader uh, available in Sri Lanka? Well, I mean, they always sort of say that the R call it forth the man or the person or whatever. Mm. So, look, there are 22 million or 21 million people in this country. I'm sure there is someone mm. who is going to be able to do this. And well, even, well, amongst, even amongst the existing politicians, there are some people who do show signs of being able to step up to the plate. Well, one thing I, I must admit that uh, from our conversations uh, on out on the streets, um, that uh, although the people said go, go to go, and they were uh, highly critical of the finance minister, highly. Uh, I mean, they, they had special words for the finance minister, yes. which I can't possibly repeat mm -hmm. on a family program. Uh, but nobody said, well, one said some, uh, some name out of the box and someone else said something else. But by and large, they know, but the public didn't say we want X instead of these. No. Yes, they, they, they have sort of built themselves up to a repudiation of the Rajapaksas in particular, hmm. but the Rajapaksas also as an illustration of the rottenness and decrepitude of the entire political leadership of the country. Yeah, but when it has, when it comes to an election, and these are the available candidates, then they will choose, I have no doubt. Look, I mean, you know, the political parties had their rallies, the SJB and the JVP. Yeah. Thousands came in. Yes. So they knew who the but leaders the, the, of those, those, those were. rallies on their own didn't... Uh, sort of engage the sovereign people uh, as much as the uh, the silent vigils did. Well, I mean, are we making here a distinction between those people who are politically active and those people who have never been politically active who have now become politically active? Well, they have to. Look, I, I asked somebody. But these that. are all citizens of this country. Absolutely. But and so we can't sort of differentiate. No, we're not. Between. But uh, I'm not trying to create a different class of people. That would be against the Constitution anyway. Uh, Absolutely. Right? But I'm only telling you what uh, the, the public out there were telling me. And actually, you know, uh, if I had my way, I'd have you. Um, sat in the middle of uh, a crowd and have this interview there but you know uh, we wouldn't be heard because uh, the sound is just so loud mm. the, no. the people are absolutely fed up no they want an outlet they want the release they Look, want uh, emancipation you know, from in 2005 this when when Mahindra Rajapaksa became the president uh, the public actually at that time what Sri Lanka needed was some tough nut to fight the LTT and that's what that's what happened it was rootless and on all that and it that's a different story but war was won but thereafter within four years of that they sent him home and that's obviously because the sovereign people of Sri Lanka uh, are not dumb nor are they deaf and nor are they blind mm -hmm. 
they were fully aware of the rampant corruption, uh, state-sponsored everything, from God, from corruption to thieving, this, that, and the other, everything. And uh, for, they sent him home. Uh, you know, uh, Mrs. Uh, Kumaratunga, uh, God bless her, she uh, received 62% uh, on her... 94. 94. Uh, Mind Paksa, having won a war, couldn't emulate that. And I think at that point is when they ought to have realized that there is trouble up in them, their hills. Uh, but they, they ignored it. Why do you think that happened? Were they so cocksure, as they say? Well, I think they were just won over by the fact that Mahindra Rajapaksa and his government and the army had ended the war, that they had won the war, and that was what swept everything else under the carpet. And then they, they ended up uh, sending the, their words, not mine, best army commander in the world yes. to Wellikada. Well, <laughs> what happened? Completely in the jumper suit as well. Yeah. Poor man. On that note, we'll go for a short break. Uh, we'll be back uh, with Dr. Pakisota Sarumnuthu on Newsline Live after this break. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali. Shortage of diesel continues. <laughs> What are the issues of parliamentarians? As the cabinet resigned. Will independent MPs cause the government's collapse? Protests continue, demanding government to resign. Return stolen wealth. First Newsline with Raz Shaukutali. And welcome back to Newsline. I am in conversation with Dr. Pakistoti Sarunuta from the CPA, Center for Policy Alternatives. Now then, Dr. Sarunuta, come on, tell us, why, why haven't they sorted this blessed thing out? The public are suffering. There's hardly any petrol and there's almost no diesel. Uh, kerosene is in short supply. Uh, the prices have gone through the roof. The dollar is trading today at over 300 rupees. The governor of the central bank has stepped down. A new one is winging his way as we speak from Australia. Um, and uh, the whole cabinet is uh, sort of offered to resign or whatever that means. Or they have resigned. Or they have resigned, uh, although I haven't seen any paperwork to that effect. All right. So what, don't you think that they should just sat down today and sorted out an interim government? I think they should have, but of course they have deferred it because I guess the calculation on some of the on the part of some of the political actors is that if you drag this out, it will turn out to be a damp squib, and that the existing government, in terms of the Rajapaksas, will be able to hold on. I mean, what is the main dynamo, mm. the main pressure for change at the present moment is mm. the protests on the streets. So it's a question of how long and how intensified can those protests be? If you look to the long term, will they be sustained? Are you, will they be are cut you, short? Are you um, remotely worried, even remotely worried, that uh, the public appear to not care 
that the president is a man with a military background with a poor show for using the army? No, I think the public do care about that, and that is precisely why the public wants him out before corruption to that he is responsible for, he, he brings in the gross human rights violations as well. I mean, he's been someone who is accused of various violations and atrocities and all of that. And so the public is not unaware of the reputation in this regard. Dr. Um, Sarumunutu, yesterday, l last night, when I did the program from outside the Independence Square, I noticed it, but it took a member of the public who was there to remind me on air that there is really no national problem. There were people who looked, who appeared to be Muslim because of their garb, uh, the ladies anyway, and there were all sorts of people. And this person reminded me that in this adversity we are all united. No, absolutely. You and that's starve how want people, you make them stand in queues for basic essentials, mm. and that's the common denominator. They all find equality in their suffering. You know, what, what, can you put your finger on one point, or can't you? They had 6.9 million, the president, to near two-thirds, and yet it's all crumbling. Yeah, I think, I, you know, it's difficult to sort of talk about one single event that led to it crumbling but I think the whole idea that you could move to organic overnight that you can shrink the tax base for by something like 500 to 600 600 billion, billion rupees you know those are that is arrogance and incapacity wedded together in a glorious mess of misgovernance you know, you, you, where do you begin? And you have a central bank governor who sort of grins and smiles at you and tells you that everything is fine, that, you know, that we don't really have a dollar shortage. We but don't we really have the Minister have to go of Finance who didn't, uh, didn't uh, even sort of acknowledge exactly. that there was a governor of the central bank. So we have no capacity within the ranks of this government to acknowledge a problem, leave aside, deal with it. Um, so you can't put a single point. Do you, do you not think that, you know, the people could have coped with the petrol queues for a while, the diesel queues or non-availability in the gas? They may have been able to cope with it grumbling all the time. But when they went home and they found that they didn't have power and that they were faced with 10 hours of power oh, cuts. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I, I met a young man so, yeah. yesterday who said he was in the IT business they work on contract for their company based in India and they he said look they don't accept these excuses about power cuts no I mean so we have a country therefore where we don't have paper to hold school exams or to print the uh, driving license and where people are climbing up on trees to, to get, get better signal I mean, you know, what era do our, does our government think it is living in? Were you at St. Thomas's in 1971 or whatever it was, yes, I when was. Mrs. Bandernaika uh, was going to be the chief guest, and uh, uh, we, had to, we were forced to dig up our beloved quadrangle. quadrangle. Do you remember that? Did it sort of cheese you off? Of course it cheeses one off if one is wedded to certain traditions. But of course you can grow grass back on a quadrangle. Do you think the Rajapaksa family will ever be able to make a comeback on the lines of Gotabe's comeback or, or the family comeback in Well, I mean, you know, this is the thing, is, is that, you know, it all depends on what comes thereafter. If the government, if Gotabe Rajapaksa is to resign and go, and the government that succeeds him is going to be a lot worse, doesn't have a clue, is equally incapable and totally out of depth and out to sea, then of course if they have a chance. And there is Nama Rajpaksa and the other brothers, mm. uh, that generation who are probably waiting to fill the shoes of the dynasty. How, how much of the blame game uh, should be placed at the doorstep of the three children? 
uh, well, one is a member of parliament, but the other two, uh, for sort of, uh, I, I must make, keep this sort of uh, within the boundaries of legality. Um, how much of uh, this sort of influence peddling it would one bla uh, place at the feet of those, uh, the other, of the children, basically? Well, I mean, the children are all part of the family. They're all part of this dynasty. There is a nephew of the president, sorry, no, cousin of the president who has already pleaded guilty in the United States for trying to embezzle 300 million odd, etc. So it's all unraveling. They're all part of a network at the end of the day that was wedded together by corruption, greed, lack of expertise, of experience of any kind. Don't you find it ironic then that they have been elected by and large by the population in rural Abs Sri Lanka. Absolutely. And how did that happen? They were very street smart in recognizing that the sources of legitimacy that they should garner were those in robes and those in uniform. And that's what brought them to power in 2019. That's what brought them to power. And do you think those people, the same group, two groups of people, have now seen through well, I mean, I was interested to see, for example, a situation where Buddhist monks mm. were told that, look, you all are responsible for the Rajapaksas, please don't come and join this protest because we hold you responsible. And they sort of went down and worshipped the robe and said, please go. go there on. was one man yesterday, a young fellow, um, who uh, went in response to my question, what are you doing here on the streets? Mm. He said, well, I uh, made a big mistake. I voted for Gotabi Rajapaksa, and so I want to say sorry, that's why I'm here. So I asked him whether he's doing his penance, and he said yes. Well, there you are. Well, it's nice to know that there was that honesty on the part of this particular person. To say it's that a pity that we don't have that honesty in, in Parliament. Absolutely. Do you think that the opposition, the collective opposition, are doing anything wrong, or should they be doing something better even? Well, I think what, the, what they should be doing better is getting together and agreeing on a single platform, what they do once they get into power, and also on the leader and the team. If they don't do that, they split the opposition vote, hmm. and then you don't have the real kind of victory that the people want to be able to say, look, we have got rid of a corrupt dynastic rule and we now are going to capture power for ourselves because this is a democracy. It has institutions, it has processes, it has laws which need to be implemented without fear or favor. What chances for Sri Lanka to find a real apolitical leader? No, we don't want an apolitical leader. We don't want a leader who is too partisan. Hmm. The, po the leader has to be political, but not partisan. That is, the leader must not look to a particular interest, but should look at the interests of all of us. At the end of the day, if you are elected president of this country, you are elected president of all the people. Hmm. And you have a responsibility. But we had this president them. say that he was elected by the Sinhalese majority. Well, there you are. I mean, so, you know, he doesn't understand what his job is. And no. that's the point, you know. They don't understand. They don't have the understanding. They don't have the sense of shame. They don't have the integrity. They don't have the expertise. They Do don't have the experience. Do you think the crowds in front of his house or near his house uh, drove the point home? I hope they did. I hope they did. I hope that someone in that house, you know, recognized that, look, this is a turnabout of events. Dr. Pakisoti Saramuti from the CPA, thank you very much for your time thank you. Uh, on Newsline. Um, I'll let you say the last words. Well, my last words at the end of the day is that, look, unprecedented things have happened. People have spilled out onto the streets and we have a demonstration of people's power. The message is that Gotabe Rajapaksa must go. And I think the only way that that can be accomplished is by an intensification of that protest. 
But that protest must at all times be peaceful and be vigilant against any mischief makers who might try to turn the whole thing into a bigger tragedy. We have to make sure that the voice of the people are heeded by those who are supposed to represent the people. Thank you very much. And uh, it's now time for the primetime news. God bless you all.